Hey, what's up everyone? So today we're going to be talking about SwiftUI and the nice new debugging tool that was made available in iOS 15. But before we talk about this debugging tool, well, first I need to set up some content. I need to create some views. So we're going to declare a couple of views and see together, well, what is inside of them. So first, let me paste the code for the first view. So as you can see, it's a detailed view. It's a pretty simple view because the view so deals with a person and a state, which are both strings. And then inside the body, well, it's very simple. I have a text and in the text I'm displaying, well, the person is currently in the current state. So something that is extremely simple for now. And now just below this first view, I'm going to paste the code for a second view. And as you are going to see, well, this second view is going to update the detail view in quite a special way. So let me paste in the code. So as you can see, I have my second view. It's called the content view. So you can see first inside that there are some static data. So first we have an array of people with three possible people names and an array of states with three possible state of minds. Okay. Then we are storing the current person and the current state. And as you can see that for the initial value, it's quite easy. I'm just taking a random element from the array of people and states respectively. But as you can imagine, well, the interesting part is inside the body. So first line of the body is quite simple. I am using the detail view and I am passing a binding to the current person and the current state. But what's more interesting is the use of the two on receive modifier just below. So first, a quick word on what is the modifier on receive. It's basically a modifier that allows you, well, to bind a combined publisher with a closure. So we pass in to this modifier a combined publisher. Here, as you can see, it's a timer that's going to publish an event every second. And then we provide a closure. And this closure will be called every time that the publisher, well, provides a new event. And as you can see in the closure, what I'm doing is that I'm saying, OK, well, every second, I'm going to update the current person with a new random value from the array. And as you can see, I have a second on receive just after. And it's quite the same ID, except that this time, well, I am updating the current state of mind. And in this second case, the value will be updated every two seconds, because as you can see, this time, the publisher is going to emit an event, well, every two seconds. So now that we've seen the code for this content view, well, what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to run the actual app in the simulator and show you how it behaves. So as you can see, we can see in the simulator, well, that the detail view is indeed being updated very regularly because, well, every single second, there is a new value that is changed inside the binding that were passed to the detail view. And so the detail view is being updated with new values. So of course, well, in the case of the code that we have written, it's very easy to understand why the detail view is being updated so often. It's because we have these unreceive modifiers on the view that actually uses the detail view. So of course here it's easy to understand the reason because well we have engineered it on purpose. But I want you to think of the context of a much larger application where we can totally imagine a situation where a view is actually being updated and we don't really understand why is this view being updated, you know, what is the property that is going to trigger this view being redrawn. And when we face such a situation, well, it's going to be super useful to have a tool that will let us know, yeah, the view is being updated, is being redrawn because the property person, for instance, has been updated with a new value. And as you can imagine, well, this is exactly what iOS 15's new debugging tool is going to do. So let's see how we can use this tool. So this tool is basically going to allow us to see in the console what are the reasons for which the body of a view has been generated a new time. So this tool, to use it, you need to call a static method. So you do it like this. You do self dot and then underscore print changes. So the syntax might seem a little weird, but it's basically the equivalent of calling the print function. And so now that we have added this line, well, inside our body, I also need to explicitly add a return in order to say, well, that my function is returning a text. And now that I have added this new line, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to relaunch my app in the simulator. I'm going to show you the console and well, we're going to see what happens inside the console. And now, as you can see, so thanks to the method print changes, we can see in the console what are the actual properties that have changed and that have triggered the body of the view to be generated once again. And as you can imagine, well, if we were trying to find what is the source, what is the actual property that triggered the changes in the view, well, this information would be super useful to pinpoint the origin of the change. So that's all I wanted to show you about this new debugging tool. But before we end, I want to give you a few tips on how to actually call this method print changes. So first, as you can see, we have to call this method. It's basically a 
new instruction in our body. So it forced us to use the keyword return. And well, it's not a great thing to do because we don't like to have this return keyword in the body of a Swift UI view. So there is actually a nice trick to avoid having to write this return. And it's simply to remove return right here. And then what we can do is that we can do let underscore equal the return of this method call. And by doing this, so this method actually doesn't return anything, but it returns void as any function that doesn't return something. So we are allowed to store this void inside a variable. And well, we are just saying that we want to discard the return value. But by doing this, well, now Swift understand that this is no longer a potential return value. And so we don't need to write the return keyword. And it makes it, well, a little bit easier if we want to add the call to this method in the function and we don't want to change the entire well, body of the function. Now, something that is also super important if you want your call to print changes to actually work is to understand that you must call this function inside the body of the view that you want to debug. And the reason why I'm saying this is that, well, when you see this line, it's kind of natural to say, to think, well, this is not a great syntax. I would like to encapsulate this in a modifier that I would then call on the view that I want to debug. And while it might be tempting to do it, and I actually try to do it, it's actually not going to work because this method needs to be called inside the body of the view. And if you call it inside the modifier, it's just not going to work because this is not how SwiftUI expects you to call this method. And this time, that's it. It's the end of the video. I told you everything I wanted to say about this new debugging tool for SwiftUI. Thank you for watching this video and see you next time.